This video is all about nodes. Okay. Let's talk about the uniform color. It's basically the color that helps you with anything and everything on Substance Designer. You could use it with masks, you could use it with grunges, with dirt. Um, it also provides a wonderful grayscale option, which also gives different things. Usually with this, I like to balance out my height. So if I have a really interesting height, like let's take this grunge Mac, for example, and I blend it with the grayscale, I could control, let's overlay that. I could control what I want the height to be and how intense I want it to be. If it's like this, it gets a little bit lighter and, uh, um, covers a lot of the grunge up. So nice. it's really good for just optimizing your height. It's really good for blending with other colors. If I put this to the color option, for example, I'm basically blending two colors. And I usually use this when I want to like polish a certain color, when I'm trying to really add uh, a very specific color to whatever texture I'm making. Now, how I like using uniform color is in conjunction with masks. So what I try to do is whenever I need to um, have a very specific color in whatever material I'm making, I usually grab a mask, um, put it into the opacity section of the blend node, and then throw in a uniform color. And I try to always find what the best. Uh, so right here, obviously, I'm doing it with the rocks, as you can see. I'm trying to just find what the best color for that is. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that's usually uh, the best way to use uniform colors. So it's very, very good for more simple materials in terms of that. And um, using gradient maps is the better option for more noisy, more abstract materials when creating color. Using it with your ambient occlusion to change the shadows of whatever material you're making. Right now I'm using an ambient occlusion with invert, with histogram, and if I just change this color to anything, it'll make it seem like we have colored ambient occlusion. Now obviously this only works with stylized textures, but you can really get a cool feeling for any material you're making using this method. Next we're gonna talk about our boy, the biggest boy, the blend node. Now, the blend node is basically the glue of substance. And what I mean by that is that you could take any two nodes and just combine them very easily. And there's so many outputs, blending modes they call them, um, that just allow it. So if I drag this opacity scale right here, you could see that it's going from that first thing that we, first tile sampler that we have, which I will explain later, and our black and white spots. And it's just blending them based on the zero to one. Um, this node basically helps put everything together. And honestly, it's one of the most useful nodes. You'll probably see yourself using this node a, a good amount. I would say like, Every texture I've ever made, I've used at least 20 blends, if not more, like for really complex materials. Yeah, it's the blender. <laughs> okay, forget I said that. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, get ready for this segment because we're going to talk about all the different blending modes and I'm just going to go through them super quickly because they're pretty intuitive and most people will probably know how to use them, mm -hmm. except for the ones that are not. Um, so copy. So copy essentially just creates a blending between your foreground output and your background output. So blending mode has two of these and then you put two different nodes into these and you can uh, go between the zero and one to blend those two nodes. Right now I'm getting a really wonky effect with these these tiles. Um, it's not exactly what I want. So next is add linear dodge and add linear dodge 
what it does now this is going to be hard to explain with this because it's already really light but if i levels this really quickly and uh make this super dark Ooh, make this super dark what linear dodge does is that it adds to the the scale uh by adding to the zero to one um and making it lighter than it previously was based on uh the white the whitest point so you can see here my mask that i'm using this, this clouds it's just making the the dark spots really light and that's pretty much all it does it just adds um, most of these are like photoshop so if you know photoshop these are going to be like super simple to understand for whoever's using substance designer um yeah the subtract node subtracts something basically that's, that's pretty much it. it's pretty self-explanatory multiply all right multiply what it does is it covers your foreground uh it, it basically creates a mask for your foreground so what you want to do usually is put um something in and then it basically covers it if i have two let's say i have two grunges like if i have this purlin noise as my background you see how the purlin noise is coming in through the clouds um and let's say i like scale this up so you really see the effect now it's basically this this is my mask and this Perlin noise is basically the noise that's in the mask and that's what multiply does it blends them like that all right next is add sub now add sub is kind of weird i don't use it often um usually it's to me it's just like a copy mixed with an add linear dodge um it basically replaces the the background with the foreground image um uh, depending on how much the opacity is um, so that one's kind of weird max lighten brightens the the lightest spot on your so there's no really diversity of range with my lights and my darks for this brick uh, pattern but it basically brightens your your lightest spot and it maxifies it that's not a word is it man shut your bitch it, it brightens it completely. Um, so min darken usually use this for bricks, rocks, um, anything that you need to <sighs> split the anything that you need to gradient basically. So if you want to things to have a little bit more of a gradient or a bevel, this is a great blending mode. Um, right now, you see what it's doing is it's taking the the background and the foreground is basically just um it's basic well well with this specifically it's like taking it over but usually um let me see if i have a brick here where i'm using the darken so right here these two bricks you see it's creating that split right there and it's creating a minimum point of darkness the brightest point and then it goes uh back to the minimum point so it just it splits them basically and this is my these are this is my foreground and uh, background for this um yeah okay let's go back to this blend wait is that the blend oh my god i'm lost no it's not it's this one <laughs> all right right so let's go to switch switch basically does the same thing as copy and as add sub except uh slightly different i think the the values and how it reacts to opacity is is kind of different the zero to one i think it blends it slightly better i i don't know really you you would want to play around with that i usually use it for colors to be honest um uh, nothing else divide it's kind of similar to wow this is a cool effect i've never used it on bricks but this is a pretty cool effect um usually it's kind of similar to subtract except it it basically tries to um neutralize the grayscale of any material so it it kind of it never goes too dark or too light uh you would want to use this when you're trying to just balance some type of height or trying to add a grunge to something um I don't find myself using this blending mode often though, so I, I wouldn't say it's that reliable or useful. Overlay is one of the best blending modes. It's really good for just adding any grunge noise or anything you need to put on to whatever you're making. It 
like it says, it overlays uh, anything, any foreground element onto the background and it does it uh, very well. Like you could see already, uh, it's very minimal here, but 0.7 or 0 0.07 on the opacity scale, you could see the grunge slightly starting to come over. This is a bad example of it with the bricks, but um, let me do that so you can see it better. And it, it starts replacing it with, well, that's, that's even more. Where's, give me a blending mode that has like, Jesus Christ. So if I overlay here, you can see how the grunge is going on top of these bricks little by little. It's in really light. You could see it slightly coming over the bricks and then it just consumes it the more I go to the one. So yeah, that's what overlay does. Let's go to screen. Screen is kind of the same thing as overlay, except it doesn't take over the brick or it doesn't take over the foreground or the background as much as overlay. Usually it tries to blend it in more instead of replace it entirely. Uh, overlay repla usually replaces the, the foreground with the background once you get to one, but screen kind of does a better job of blending the two. So if you want to have a slightly, it's basically a different type of overlay. Um, and soft light, soft light, I would say is similar to, to overlay and screen in the sense where it uh, goes over the background with the foreground grunge noise or whatever you're putting, except it, what it does is it, it does it a lot softer. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> um, it, it basically is a lighter, it's like a baby version of screen and overlay so if you need to put a grunge or if you need to blend the color in that's really that but you need it to be very subtle very minimal um effect then soft light is probably the best and um that's pretty much all the blending modes and i hope i covered them well because that was rough I, I really didn't prepare for that one that was all off the top of the dome so uh yeah let's go to our next node Introducing the tile sampler. Next is the tile sampler node. And the tile sampler node is honestly one of the best nodes in Substance Designer. It is extremely important. You probably will use it at uh, that you, um, you any texture, if not all textures, require a towel sampler at some point. Um, basically, what towel sampler does is it is used for tiling any simple shapes, and this is what it usually looks like. It start it starts you off with just a bunch of squares tiled, um, and basically it has a bunch of different types of parameters you can mess around with <laughs> to Why? get different types of effects and different things that you're looking for. Um, I'm going to go over all of these in a second. Two hours later. So really quick, I'm just going to go over the different parameters that Tile Sampler has and what they do really quickly. So X and Y amount, you basically have uh, you control how many of the shape you want. Uh, there's different types of patterns, um, different rotations. You could symmet You could do random symmetry if you have a really complex shape that might help you get more variety to your stuff. You could change the scale to be lower or, or higher or bigger or smaller. Uh, you could add a different type of scale so that they're randomized and you have like big squares and small squares or if you're using a bell, you have these bells doesn't matter what shape you're using it's all the same um, you have position random and that just randomizes where they are it's kind of self-explanatory you have offset you have displacement map intensity which these are the more complex one as, as well as vector map displacement these you actually have to input things into here so let's say I take a Perlin noise and I just want to throw that in here uh, I can displace my my shapes through this like through the perlin noise and it actually 
starts creating, uh, it basically creates a mask for these shapes to follow and like how they should be forming. Uh, you have rotation and that rotates uh, whatever your shape is. Rotation random rotates them in different ways. Pretty self-explanatory. Mask Mac threshold. This is for when you have a, a mask being plugged in into the Mask Mac map input mask. Wear your mask, guys, by the way. Wear your goddamn masks. What? I'm just kidding. Not if you have the vaccine, though. Yeah. Um, mask random basically just masks out uh, any of the shapes that you have. So you can you can uh, limit how many shapes you want. If if you're you know doing this with a rocks or or like pebbles, you need specific or grass. You need like specific strands to be more important than the others, etc. Color random is basically just changing the height and how uh, how much variation between height you want. So yeah, that's basically all of Tile Sampler. What I'll do next is explain a couple cool tips and tricks that I do with Tile Sampler, and uh, and then we are gonna move on. All right. So here are a couple of things that I like to make with tile sampler only tile sampler specifically because it's really useful we go from roofs grass bricks uh cracks um procedural little things maybe uh, a grunge if you really need to make that some pearl and noise type of thing bubbles anything that requires multiple shapes in one that's what tile sampler is perfect for so here i'm going to show you guys um with this tile sampler i'm creating some bricks uh, and we're just using a flood fill after that and some flood fill gradients to achieve this effect and tile sampler with flood fill one of the best combinations you could have ever it's one of the best one of the best whoa calm down jamal all right, so the next uh, function that I'll show you guys for Tile Sampler is using a disc pattern uh, with a size, a, a Y size of 0 0.02. Well, I mean, you just want the discs to be really small. I won't go over all the uh, nitty gritties, but then you use a histogram scan and a distance node to make cracks. And this is really useful for any um, uh, ground pattern or or if you're making glass um, a lot of uses for that so let's move on to our next one so in this example uh, I'm using grass or using the tile sampler node um, to use this specific shape that I made of a grass clump and I'm tiling it uh, a shit of times um, and uh, making it look uh, adding a lot of directionality to give it a sense of flow and purpose and make it look like actual grass how wild it is um, so yeah those are just uh, three examples of what you can do with tile sampler there's many more and um, it's gonna be it for that um that's gonna do it for this video i think that three nodes although uh they're all simple it was kind of like a tedious process to record and i might do it again or i might do something different depending on like what you guys think so just let me know in the comments and with your likes and such um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I appreciate all the feedback I've been getting on my videos and I hope that you guys enjoy this one as much as the other ones. Um, yep. Thank you very much and bye.